G'day, this is Captain Noob and this is the Institute Turbo Plasma Rifle. This is a somewhat customizable standalone weapon with some animations that are tweaked from the plasma gun. So looking over this thing's aesthetics, it seems to have the same design features as the Institute laser gun of the vanilla game, which makes this thing quite law friendly, which is great. It isn't going to look too bad or too different in the hands of synths as compared to their laser gun counterparts. So yeah, actually kind of happy with the way this looks. Nice and weathered too. Getting into the attachments right here. First of all, we've got the capacitors, which are exactly the same as you'd find in the plasma gun itself. So what we're going to do is chuck that to an overcharged capacitor for the best damage. And just like the vanilla gun, or the vanilla plasma gun, you can change to how this thing is going to fire by changing the barrel. So you can put an automatic barrel on for some automatic fire and a sniper barrel for better range and accuracy as well, or better range and um, less ammo capacity. The accuracy seemingly doesn't change, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, we'll make this our sniper one, so we'll chuck on an improved sniper barrel there. 202 damage, uh, ballistic and energy there, so we're going to be doing a respectable amount of damage. And we'll chuck on a recoil compensating stock just to get rid of some of that extra recoil because that might interfere with our aiming. Now for the sights, the only non-scope sight is actually this reflex sight. The rest of them are either short, medium or long scopes or a night vision variant of those. And there's no recon variant, which kind of sucks because I feel like recon scopes with their color and everything kind of suit the um, boxy sort of look of the Institute weapons in the vanilla game. So I'm kind of sad that they're not there, but whatever. We'll just go for a short scope because we're going to be in sort of close quarters with this thing. So we'll definitely do that. And of course, a legendary effect is there if you need it. We probably won't because this thing, 202 damage. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, we'll, we'll grab an automatic one though. We'll see you in Gunner's Plaza. Righto, here we are in Gunner's Plaza and this is what our plasma gun looks like in first person. See, it's not as boxy. It kind of works pretty well. But looking at this thing in third person, as you can tell, this thing is bloody huge. So I'm actually kind of glad this thing is actually kind of um, conservative on the amount of screen space that it takes up despite its size. Yeah, but yes, looking at it in third person, looks like a pretty decent weapon. Anyways, we'll move on from looking at the thing and we'll see it in action. Now, just like the laser guns in the vanilla game, this thing will shoot blue plasma or blue projectiles. So instead of the green plasma that we're used to seeing, it'll be shooting some nice blue ones. So we'll just wait for little Miss Gunner to run around the corner and then we'll one shot her with a cheeky little headshot there. And without the sneak attack criticals, we're still doing a pretty good amount of damage there. Although we're going to need to watch our ammo capacity because we've only got 12 in here. Just like the vanilla gun of the vanilla, uh, yes, the vanilla plasma gun of the vanilla game. Vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. So, when you actually reload this thing, what happens is that little, um compartment over the plasma cartridge actually closes up which is a great idea obviously you don't want this that plasma cartridge being damaged and having the ammo explode whilst it's so close to your face so yes in terms of how this thing is designed and how much sense that it does make that is actually a really nice touch on it it actually would make sense that the institute would um sort of improve on or optimize the whole use of this weapon, improving the safety elements and everything like that, which is great. So, very good weapon design there by the modders part and also the um, lore sort of implications of that. Okay, unfortunately it's like shooting basketballs with these projectiles, but that's just something that happens with the plasma gun projectiles of the vanilla game. So, despite my shitty aim, as you can tell there with the crosshairs opening up, this thing's actually got really good hip fire for a sniper type weapon. Um, just ignore my inability to actually hit anything. Okay, basic gunner goes down in one shot, no big surprise there. Anyways, looking at this thing and using it in third person there, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. It looks a little bit unwieldy, but you know what, in the hands of some synth eradicator that you'd find out in the wasteland, I feel like this thing would be nice and intimidating enough to stop any of those pesky railroaders from trying to meddle in synth operations. Anyways, we'll move on from our sniper to our automatic. It's going to have the same sounds as the vanilla gun, so there's nothing too much to comment there other than it's actually sort of well done for just sourcing vanilla um, sounds for weapons already in the game. So sure, that's fine. As you can tell, yes, the thing closes up there too. It's a nice subtle change to the animations that adds a whole lot of depth to the weapon, I believe. It's some good design there. Okay, so it looks like this thing is absolutely... Um, yeah, okay, it can destroy everything, but we're gonna go ahead and vats up Captain Bridget because she's got a nice damage over time gun. And we'll go for a nice crit on you. 
I don't think I counted three shots there, that kind of sucks. But never mind, she's dead now. And then we'll quickly hide in this room and take out this gunner. Now all the inherent um, uh, shortcomings of the plasma gun are also shortcomings of this one. Unfortunately, being a turbo plasma gun, it actually doesn't make the projectiles move any faster. Which kind of sucks, but makes this weapon actually require skill to hit things. Because yeah, it's not a hit scan weapon like the laser guns are. Which is a nice trade-off. I like the... Um, less damage more skill versus the more damage and more skill sort of thing that's always a nice touch it's always been with the fallout games i'm actually getting memories back to the um place where you have to work for the van graf standing outside with that dude i can't i forget his name but he but you get the choice between a laser gun and a plasma gun and if he, he, he changed he comments um depending on which gun you choose but anyways that's irrelevant what i should be talking about is this thing's inability to use a scatter gun barrel on it so you can't actually make this into a shotgun which kind of sucks i'm not sure whether this was overlooked by the modder due to um n you know not really needing it or whether he just didn't want to create another model for the scatter gun to exist not really sure what's going on there, but regardless, we probably won't getting, be getting too much use out of the scatter gun when the automatic one is that good anyway. Anyways, let's just shake this thing up with a little bit of gun fear action. Hi, hey, there's a mysterious stranger who's actually got the health bar. That means he's gonna show up. Too bad, mysterious stranger. Your job is not... Um, yeah, you have to wait until later to show up, probably. Righto, so... Yes, commenting on this thing's damage after being... Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good in Gunners Plaza there. Definitely a high-tier weapon. Maybe outclasses the vanilla plasma gun in um, just damage. But style points, I kind of like the look of the vanilla plasma gun. But yeah, this thing is definitely a nice-looking weapon. Very good. All right, we'll move on to something else. Maybe we'll chuck some legendary effects onto it. Shake it up a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. Who knows? Right, so our destination is that fish packing plant where there'll be lots of synths. I actually want to see if synths will spawn with this weapon. But there's usually a Mylurk Queen lurking around here, so we've got to take her out. We've got the Deadeye Legendary effect on this, so we're going to offset the slowness of the projectiles by speeding down the game around us. And also we've pissed off some other Mylurks. We'll just switch over to our automatic one. Okay, he decided he doesn't want any part of this, so we'll just go up nice and close, and then go full auto on him. Didn't really punch through his carapace as much as I thought plasma would, or he just would melt through it in real life, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, we got him pretty easily. We'll switch back over to our sniper now and engage these synth bastards at long distance. There's usually one sitting up here. Let's see, he's got himself, yes he does. Okay, so if you want to grab this weapon in your game, you'll definitely find it on synths. If you're, um, sided with the Institute, or at least friendly with them, you can easily kill these synths and the others won't give a shit. Oh, nice, I like how the physics go all slowy and glitchy when you shoot things in slow motion. That's good stuff. Okay, so, so far, so good. I actually want to see what he dropped on his. So he had... Just a short turbo plasma rifle. That looks like it has zero modifications on it. Um, that's interesting. Maybe they don't spawn with modifications. Usually, well, they would. That one's just got a standard laser gun. There we go. Cheeky little headshot on him. Now, I'm usually expecting more to pop out soon, so maybe I should have turned on the more scripted spawns for here because the synths aren't actually all that common here. There might be a few outside, but there's nothing too serious. In fact... Was there any synth eradicators? I don't think there have been. Hello. Now the recoil on this thing is actually quite um, controllable too, so that works pretty well. Now the synth seeker, he decides to put his weapon away, whatever it was, and punch me instead, which it was just a laser gun, never mind. What about you? You look like you've got some sort of plasma... Yes, yes you do. Okay, looks like we're on the receiving end of this weapon. Yes, those blue projectiles do look pretty good, and that is not another one unmodified, judging by the prefixes there. Oh, we've got another Seeker here. That one's just got a pleb uh, vanilla laser gun. So, well, I think we're done outside here. Let's head inside and put a peg over our noses, because this place probably smells like rotting fish. Also, we missed him somehow. 
Don't, but don't worry, we could kill him very, very easily indeed. Righto, we'll get inside. Righto, we're inside now, and did anyone watch the QuakeCon Fallout 76 thing when they were going through the little character creator there, which is very similar to Fallout 4, which I'm happy with. You can probably sculpt um, your characters to make them look like they should very, very easily. My only hope is they could make a Nora prefix so I could make a goth again, because, you know, goth Nora is the best character ever. Okay, looks like we've cleared out whatever was on the first floor there. I shouldn't have pressed this button because I can just fall straight down because I have got acrobat um, legendary effects on me. So, whoops. Going down the thing now. But yes, I actually kind of like that QuakeCon thing. It was nice to actually hear them um, go over some of the questions that were in the game. And I'm definitely still happy that I've pre-ordered it. Maybe it's probably a bad com consumer practice to pre-order stuff when... No information has really been given out, but ooh, wow, that's a lucky missile launcher. He's a very lucky synth indeed. Uh. Now he's dead. <laughs> yep, that one's got a turbo plasma rifle. He's actually got a scope on his, so yeah, this might actually be the first modified one we've actually seen. Now we have to actually get up there, which um, with some tricky platforming skills like me, parkour expert we can easily get up to where he was what did you have you had a night vision boosted agitated institute plasma turbo thingy good for you synth now you're dead now some stupid looter dude could come in here don't need this aluminium when i have cheats not really much to talk about in damage with this thing now because these guys are only mid-level synths for some reason i kind of wish they'd actually get more levels but um, just how Fallout 4 works, the first time you enter a cell is what the level of the enemy's level is, what they're going to be capped at. So um, if I had the script spawning mods outside, likely there'd be heaps of um, synth eradicators floating around. We'll switch over to our automatic one because why not? And then we'll go full auto hit fire on his ass. Ooh, what have you got there? You've got some sort of weapon that makes an interesting sound. Stop shooting me with that. What did you have? That was a Beretta. Okay. I've still got that mod installed because it's a good mod. But anyways, looks like we've summoned more synths up above. So we ought to take them out by getting into the elevator and not getting lost. Then we'll quickly finish them off. So excited for Fallout 76 though, I'm interested in that perk system too, where you get the perk cards. Although I'm kind of wishing you could do some sort of everything build like you did in Fallout 4, because there's going to be no cheats that would allow you to do that, otherwise you'd just become some overpowered god. But yeah, maybe they'll change the rules once people get settled in. But yes, having a character being able to do everything does make recording videos easier. Anyways, I think we'll go ahead and go outside and maybe we'll kill one more monster. Righto, let's kill the Wendigo, but the fake Wendigo, because we all know the real Wendigos from Fallout 76. If you happen to be watching this past the release of Fallout 76, I've probably killed the Wendigo by now, hopefully. So, 1500 damage off the bat there, which is good stuff. I think he's a little bit more in range now, so we get a little bit more damage, although that might have been concentrated fire. 1942. Pretty good damage, and we knocked him down due to the sniper perk, which was great. We're out of action points, so no point in staying in that. And we can keep him nice and sort of um, stopped when we go ahead and hit him like that. Being able to fire a little bit faster compared to real time under the effects of Deadeye is a definite good way to stop him in his tracks too. What I want to do is get him knocked down one more time, and then we'll lay into him with a little bit of automatic fire, so we'll pop May no, we will skip the reload, and then we'll get straight into shooting his face. Okay, we're at, we're out of crits, but hopefully concentrated fire could pick up the slack. There we go. We'll chuck in a crit for good measure. So pretty good damage there, although we're not getting the super sneak attack critical um, damage bonuses that we get from a suppressed weapon. We're still doing pretty well indeed. Didn't get any knockdowns there, which kind of sucks. We got a 15% chance, I think, to get those knockdowns. So it's unlikely with all these 12 shots that we actually don't get that. But yes, RNG, she's a cruel mistress.
Yeah, you reload that thing in bats. Oh god, he's unkillable. Why is he unkillable? No, never mind. He just he just remembered to drop dead because his health bar was zero. Okay, so there you have it. That was the Institute Turbo Plasma Rifle. It's a nice addition into Fallout 4. Um, it kind of sucks that the Institute weapons weren't really expanded upon other than their crappy laser rifles, which are kind of outclassed except for in Raid of Fire by the um, pre-war vanilla ones. But, you know, they're just there for something. I, I don't really know the purpose. Maybe to give you lots of fusion cells during the... Um, Brotherhood quests where you go to Arcjet systems. Never mind. So, if you'd like to see this bad boy in your game, and I do highly recommend it, it is a great weapon mod. Um, check out the description. It is sort of lightweight too, so if you haven't got a lot of hard drive space on your Xbox One, I think it's like 30 megabytes, something like that, which is pretty damn good for a nice weapon like that. If you're doing an Institute synth build, then yeah, this is the weapon for you if you like to choose your weapon mods based on your current build. So, that's good stuff. Links in the description, as well as a companion mod for this current character. Is she going to be in Fallout 76? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching, guys.